So Kristen, apparently the money's drying up for Biden and people are opening up their wallets for Kamala Harris. Where do you see this going? Well, Joe Biden will not be the nominee, but Democrats would be foolish to make Kamala Harris the replacement. I mean, Kamala Harris. Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining today's show. Guys, we've got some bombshell news. Donald Trump has a new opponent. We've got this sneak peek, guys. They're talking about it. A lot of donors are actually have said that they're going to take their pledges, all those tens of millions of dollars, and give them to who you're going to see in this video. Check it out. Of our plan for economic relief are massive tax cuts for workers. It's called no tax on tips. No tax on tips. Waitress comes over. How's everything going? A really nice person. How's everything? Oh, sir, it's so tough. The government's after me all the time on tips, tips, tips. But I said to her, let me just ask you a question. Would you be happy if you had no tax on tips? She said, what a great idea. I got my information from a very smart waitress. That's better than spending millions of dollars. Former President Donald Trump doubling down on his plan to end taxes on tips, touting a waitress who inspired his plan. Kristen Tate is a columnist for The Hill and a Sky News contributor, and she joins us now. Kristen, good morning. It's great to see you. Good morning. Uh, so we great wanted to, to highlight you. this bit of Donald Trump's speech because it's an interesting story, interesting idea. It's also a politician that's talking to actual people not just the donor class, and it's something that greatly impacts people living in the swing state of Nevada. So what do you think about this idea? Yeah, I mean, it's a great idea when it comes to reaching out to working class people. At this point, the Democrat Party has become the party of radical left wingers and also of elites and high income people. Republicans have become the party of the working American, the average middle class family. And this is just another example of that. And before we went on air, I was looking at polls that show Trump is leading Biden in every battleground state with independent voters. Of course, some of these independent voters still don't like Trump and find him off-putting, but he is at pluralities and majorities in every state with independent voters that's up for grabs on the map. And I think this is a big reason why the economy, and this is just another uh, point for Trump in that, in that direction. And uh, I expect this will be a very popular proposal with working class Americans, especially those who work for tips, of course. Well, here's more on money from Trump last night. Listen. This is the only administration that said, we're going to raise your taxes by four times what you're paying now, and people are supposed to vote for them? I've never heard it. <laughs> you're paying too much. We're going to reduce your taxes. Still further, we gave you the biggest one, as I said. We're going to give you more. Okay, so, Kristen, you have the whole working man and working woman appeal from Donald Trump and the Republicans right now. But combat that with what Donald Trump just said right there. How does the Democrat nominee, whoever that apparently is at this point, combat that notion? Trump saying, I'm going to lower your taxes, and the Democrat really not being able to say that if they keep in line with what Joe Biden has promised to do in a second term. Right. Well, for the Democrats to win on the economy at this point, they would have to completely remake the wheel because uh, you're right, there's really no way to effectively combat that uh, that claim by Donald Trump. I mean, everything was better in Donald Trump's America, but particularly the economy. All Americans, but especially those working class Americans, see how consumer prices have absolutely skyrocketed under Joe Biden. And the Democrats' response to that has been to point at Donald Trump and call him a threat to democracy and try to make this an election that's a referendum on Trump and and his personality being too bombastic and being kind of off-putting, that might have worked with some voters in 2020, but it's just not going to work now. It's lost its, uh, its mobilization effect on independent voters, and the economy is consistently ranked as the number one issue for voters, and I just don't see how the Democrats are going to eclipse Trump on this issue unless, again, they completely remake their, their platform. I also want to ask you about everything that's going on with President Biden. And after the debate, the game plan was to get Biden out there in front of the media and do as many interviews as possible. And before he announced that he had COVID, he was doing just that. He was speaking to a Univision reporter. We have a clip from that. Listen to how it went. I performed terribly. And so people are now saying, well, that was only one thing. But <clears throat> he's 81 years old. What happened when he's 84 years old? <laughs> what happens <laughs> excuse me, when he's 85 years old? I was smart enough to know 
uh, with age comes wisdom. And on top of the coughing, we have this Politico report called Democrat Donors are reportedly prepared to start raising money for Kamala Harris if Biden drops out and she becomes the nominee. Goes on to say some organizers said donors were already lining up to give in case Kamala Harris leads the Democrat ticket. So, Kristen, apparently the money's drying up for Biden and people are opening up their wallets for Kamala Harris. Where do you see this going? Well, Joe Biden will not be the nominee, but Democrats would be foolish to make Kamala Harris the replacement. I mean, Kamala Harris is a complete dud. Uh, Joe Biden actually might have found the one vice president who would perform worse in the upcoming election than he would. Uh, she was a complete dud uh, in 2020 when she tried running herself. She dropped out before one vote was cast. I believe she was polling around 4% at the time. Uh, but the Democrats and the media completely overhyped her because of her race and the fact that she's a woman. Uh, but I know a lot of Democrats. I have a lot of them in my family and my friends, and all of them tell me they hope that Harris is not Biden's replacement. Uh, they would love to see someone else, like Michelle Obama would be great in their view, or even Gavin Newsom would be better. But ugh, Kamala Harris just keeps failing upward, and she would be even worse than Biden. Well, buckle up, because recent reports say there is a potential for the next month to have jockeying within the Democratic Party if Joe Biden does not endorse Kamala Harris. If so, we are in for, let's call it what it is, an absolute yeah. month of insanity. And I'm sure Republicans out there are here for it because it just highlights a party in unison and another yeah. party and in disarray. And can I say, if that happens, um, it, it's not going to be, there's not going to be a primary process. It'll be delegates deciding who the next candidate mm -hmm. is. I mean, the President Biden could tap somebody. It would give them... You know, a, a great. Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for watching the video. Tell me what your thoughts are in the comment section. I can't believe this. A lot of polls are showing that they're actually, she's not too far from Biden when it comes to actually trying to beat Trump. But guys, let me tell you this. When it comes to where the Republican Party is at, where Trump is at with Vance, where the polls are at, everybody is just leaning towards Trump to take this and win it, guys. Let me know your thoughts. But just want to say thank you so much for watching this video. If you don't mind clicking the thumbs up button, guys, it really helps to grow the channel right there. We love you. Thank you so much for helping us grow this community. We want to serve you every day with the top news. Take care and we'll see you in the next one.